FileMaker developers have long been fascinated with the expanding and collapsing triangle first introduced on the Macintosh operating system for viewing the contents of a folder in ListView. Here's what I mean. It's the same concept, there's not a triangle, but there's a plus and a minus. And you can see I can show the contents anytime I want, or I can expand all of them or collapse all of them. It's very flexible. I've used this technique on one commercial solution solely because it requires you to break relational rules and flatten your data. Let me show what I mean. If you come over here, we'll see what the data looks like. We'll see that not only the companies, but the people are all in the same table. Now the solution I used it for was perfect because all the data was imported. I didn't have to make any complicated scripts for data entry to allow them to easily work with the database. It was just strictly on import. And also, I think that the triangle, the expanding collapsing thing, fit really well into the whole solution. It really made sense where I was putting it. Anyhow, my point is, consider the ups and downs of this technique before implementing it. It's going to be more difficult to work with it as far as flattened data and data entry. But if you really works well for that solution, then do it. So let's take a look at this table more closely. You'll see that it has a primary key, a foreign key. Now this primary and foreign key are used to connect each other. So you notice that FileMaker Incorporated has Rick Coleman, Chris Krim, and Dominique, right? They all have ones next to their foreign key. Same thing with database pros. You see a nine on this primary key for the company, and then a nine on the company as well in the foreign key, and then on John Mark Osborne. So hopefully you're getting the point. I also want to uh, make it clear that you don't have to enter these records in order. Notice that Dominique is way down here at the end, Clay is right here, Chris is here. They're all in different orders. It's important that you pay attention to that because you might over, you know, look over this uh, feature and, and, you know, figure that, okay, they're putting them all in order. It's easy to do. Well, it takes a little bit more work when it, they're not in order to make this work. So let's look at the relationship now. And you can see we have interface. Now, you don't really need an interface table, but I kind of like it. That's where I start everything from. It's got nothing in it, really no records, or it's got one record, but um, it relates to the data field. And you can see this is a Cartesian product. It's showing everything. So it really doesn't matter what the primary and foreign keys are. But it is important to look that there is a sort on KF data ID. Then the same thing here. We've got a sort on KF data ID. And you can see that we have an equals here but then we have a not equals here. So in other words, we don't want to see the same record inside this relationship, and you'll find out why later when we look at it. Just remember that. So you can see how it goes all the way down the list here. So let's look at our portal here real quick. Go back to the tip, look at the portal, and see it's the data table. So that means it corresponds over to this one right here. Now let's take a look at the field inside and that's still the data table. So I think what you're going to find out is that the data too is used inside the scripts when we're expanding and collapsing. Okay, let's go back over to our list view. There's our data. We type it right in there. That's our data entry. And then you can notice that the data display is a little bit different. This is a calculation. Each one of the people has a tab in front of it. And that's easily done through a calculation. We just go into Manage Database, look at the fields, and you'll see we say when KP data ID doesn't equal KF data ID, then put a tab in there and then add in the data field from there. Simple as that. It's either going to be true or false. And that's one reason why I have, even on the parent, I also have the foreign key filled in. So I want to compare these two. And I actually could have had them empty, but this is the reason why we're sorting it. Because now, if we have all these filled, if you go back over here and look at our portal, and I apologize, look at the relationship. So we're not sorting the portal because we want to have it sorted not only in the portal, but also in the relationship. So what we're doing here is this sort right here by KF data ID makes them go all in the same order no matter how they're entered. That's very important to do. But also, again, we're going to use that sorted relationship inside the script to figure out when we're uh, expanding and collapsing a single line. 
Okay, so what we got here? We've got our table. We've got our script running. We haven't looked at the script yet, but I think we're ready to look at the rest of it. Let's start with the expand all. Now this expand all and collapse all actually runs on open. If you look in our file options, you'll see in the script triggers we have the startup there. And then if we go into our script workspace, we'll see the startup script has perform script collapse and expand all. So here's what it does. It basically declares dollar sign dollar sign rows. Now let's take a look at dollar sign dollar sign rows before we pick apart this script. And I'm going to go and open the data viewer. And you'll see it has 6, 7, 10 in it. What happens if I go ahead and remove that or collapse it? Now you have all these numbers showing up. And these actually correspond to all the people. Now if I expand all of them, you'll see that they disappear eventually. Now it's very important based on this that we have these in order. You see how 2, 3, 8, 11 is there? And 6, 7, and then 10? Now if I was in a, had a problem with expand all, it might not work if I did that. I need to have them all together like that so I can take individual lines out. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to look for the 10, or the 6, 7, or the 2, 3, 8, 11. They have to be in the same order. So that's why that relationship sorted. I need to make sure they all go grouped together when I expand all and collapse all. And therefore when I do that, then I need to make sure that I can, when I'm do, looking just at these two, I can find them in the same order in there and get rid of them. So there we go. Let's go ahead and uh, work on this and see what we can do. Let's go into our script. Go to our expand all. And you can see first it commits the records. And that's so that the list function we're going to use works from the perspective outside the portal and finds all of the related records. So if dollar sign dollar sign rows is empty, OK, remember what that means. That means that. In this case, if it's empty, that means that we are expanded all of them, right? OK. So we'll go back into Script Maker here. So if that's empty, then what we're going to do is this. We're going to go ahead and grab everything through the list function. And we're going to grab all those numbers so we have them in, that, in, that, uh, in a return separate list. And that's how it actually gets in there. You'll see that. And then, of course, uh, before we go and look at it, the dollar sign, dollar sign rows, if, it's, if it, this is uh, uh, not empty, then it just clears it. And then the refresh is just to update the portal. Otherwise, it wouldn't update until you, you know, actually went up here and did refresh window. But nobody wants to do that. So again, here's what happens. You can see, if we collapse all, that it fills everything in. We expand all. It takes it all apart. It's just a swapping it out. Now, the hard part really is expanding and collapsing just one section, right? I have to find those values and remove them no matter where they are on the list. Because watch, 2, 3, 8, 11 is at the end. But what happens if I do this and then do that? Now 2, 3, 8, 11 is at the beginning. So I have to find them no matter where they're at. And I have to make sure that they're always 2, 3, 8, 11. That's, again, the reason for that sorted relationship to make sure no matter how I entered them in over here, Whatever order I them in there, they're sorted through the relationship. So they're all the ones are together, all the fives are together, all the nines are together. And it makes it easy for me to find that sequence of numbers. OK, so let's take a look at the slightly different expand and collapse all, or I'm sorry, row. And the difference here is we have to go ahead and do a little surgery on that return separate list. So the first thing we do is we set dollar sign list to the list function. and because we're in clicked in a row and we haven't done a commit, it gets just for that particular parent what the, the list function is. And we do this up here because we use it quite a few times out here. You know, we can see it's right here in this set variable and also in this one right here. And of course in the if statement. So I want to declare it once. So what we do is we say is dollar sign list inside dollar sign dollar sign rows. If it is, then we're gonna do this, we're gonna take it out. So what we do is we use the substitute function to look inside dollar sign dollar sign rows for dollar sign list and replace it with just simply a return. So it removes it. It it uh, you know cuts it out. Now if it uh, you know if the dollar sign list is not in there, 
Then what it's going to do is add it. And you can see why it gets added to the end because we're saying dollar sign, dollar sign rows, a return, and dollar sign list. But you can also see back up here on this why the order is so important, why that relationship has to be sorted. And then finally at the end, I do this trick that uh, I do uh, quite often. It's very easy to do. I remove the extra return, whether it's at the beginning or the end. And I do that by saying grab me left words, and you could have used right words, 999, a really big number. And so that extra return that gets added in there that I don't want because it kind of misses up my, you know, my uh, return separate list, my nice, neat, you know, thing. Um, I, I don't want that in there. And so this will go ahead and say, okay, well, I'm fine. I'm going to get all the words. But if a, if a re, uh, return is not su uh, surrounded by words on either side, I'm going to get rid of it. That's just the way the word functions work. They'll get rid of any trailing or leading returns. Now, the reason it's there is because when you add, uh, when you go ahead and collapse the first time, you're actually going to have returns there because you're going to say dollar sign, dollar sign rows is empty, put a return in there, and then put dollar sign list in there. So that's what it's trying to get rid of. So it doesn't always need it to be there, but it, it works when it needs to. And rather than doing it inside of here, like an if statement saying, hey, if it's empty, don't put the return in, that takes longer than doing this at the end. You know, you have to do this every time with the case statement here and test for, you know, whether that's that, you know, the dollar sign, dollar sign row is empty. Here, I just have to do it once at the end, and I just find it uh, faster to do it that way. Okay, so there is that script. Now, the final thing that you have here, and by, by you know, don't worry about this. This is a very complex technique. I even write it down here in the notes. This technique will take a while to understand. So be patient with it. You're going to have to go ahead and try it out. Click on here, click on there, change this, isolate this piece of the code to really understand and fully imbibe it. But let's move on to the last piece here and look at it. Notice how we have those plus and minus buttons there? Let's go back to browse mode and see what they look like. Okay, so we plus. See how the plus button is hiding the minus button on these rows, but then it disappears on this row, so it shows? Let's see what those formulas are. They're using the hide objects, right? So the minus sign says, if KP data ID doesn't equal KF data ID, then I want you to hide. Of course, that's only going to happen on certain rows, right? If you go back into browse mode, and one thing to help you understand, you might put the, the KP and KF ID fields on here to see what it's doing, but you can see that the only time it's ever going to show up is on this row. It's going to hide it on every other one, simply because KP and KF only equal each other on this one right here. There we go. So let's go ahead and see what the, the one on the plus sign is. It's a little more complicated, but not too much more. It's got this condition which says when the list for that particular row is not inside dollar sign, dollar sign rows, then go ahead and hide it. Now I'm, I'm realizing I forgot one crucial piece to this whole thing. We're going ahead and building, let's go back to browse mode, building up this, this value list here, depending on whether uh, things are, are empty or not. And uh, it might be empty, it might be em not, but whatever. But when it's full and, and filled in here, this is what determines whether they show up here or not. We're checking this in a filtered portal. That's the, the, you know, the, the final feature, that combination of features that makes this work. And this is quite complicated. We have calculations and, and flattened tables and scripts and sorted relationships. And now we have uh, you know, uh, uh, this uh, feature that's going ahead and, and uh, filtering the portal. So let's go ahead and look at it here. I'm going to move this plus sign back so it looks nice and neat. Double click on this. Look at the filter portal. It's not a complex thing, but it's saying look for the KP data ID inside dollar sign, dollar sign rows. If it's not in there, then I don't want you to show it, right? It's a simple thing. And so it's checking every single row and determining whether it exists in that, that return separate list we've been making with dollar sign, dollar sign rows. So you can see right here, if we put those numbers on there, that right now, because we've, we've expanded it, it doesn't, it's not in this dollar sign, dollar sign row, so it's able to show it. It's not filtering it out. And remember, the, the way I've done it is I've said if it's false, you know, don't show it. So, you know, now it's filtering out because it can find it in there. So 
All these features combined together is going to take you a while to figure this out and understand how this all works. So don't get frustrated. Just keep on it. Understand one feature at a time, one piece at a time, and eventually get it. And build it from scratch yourself. That will really help too.